Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another session of the Beyond Access series. Uh, tonight, we are here with our assistive technology team, uh, and they're going to be sharing free assistive technology solutions to empower diverse learners. Uh, I'm Jose Rios, the Director of Family Empowerment and Communications for the Division of Specialized Instruction and Student Support. And, and tonight, let me, I'm gonna share some information with all of you. Uh, tonight, like in every night, uh, you all have uh, the ability to ask your questions through the Q&A function. Um, you'll be able to see this on your screen as a little icon that has the letters Q and A. Uh, feel free to type in your questions throughout the presentation. Uh, and, uh, and we'll be able to answer those uh, throughout the presentation. And we also have some dedicated time towards the end to answer those questions for you. Our presenters tonight, as I mentioned, are part of our assistive technology team, uh, and they are Colleen Warren and Lindsay Huntley. And also supporting us with the Q&A behind the scenes is Suzanne Sanchez, our Senior Director of Therapeutic Services for the DOE. So without any further ado, I want to welcome Colleen and Lindsay. Hi. 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 Thank you for having us. Uh, let me get my screen share up. Um, hi, I'm Colleen Warren. I'm the director for the Center for Assistive Technology. And thank you for joining us tonight. And we are presenting with me on free assistive technology solutions to empower diverse learners is Lindsay Huntley. So um, let me get my screen share up and we will get this uh, um, started right away. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Okay, all right, um, so let's go. So, um, so presenting to you uh, by the Center for Assistive Technology is Free Assistive Technology Solutions to Empower Diverse Learners. Okay. Okay, so if you see at the top of our slide, there's a bit.ly and if you type that into your web browser, you will be able to get the slide deck and don't worry, we can drop this. Um, it'll be throughout the slide deck, the bit.ly if you miss it. So it's on several slides. So we're gonna talk about who we are, assistive technology, accessible educational materials and instructional technology, literacy, reading and writing, free, if we said free, <laughs> assistive technology solutions and tools, and then we'll have resources, questions and answers. So the Center for Assistive Technology and Technology Solutions are our two central AT teams. And we provide, together we provide assistive technology evaluation and support for preschools, charters, non-public community schools, pre-K through 12th grade, and our counterpart, the other central AT team, Technology Solutions, um, services our District 75 students and these include students who are severely part of hearing impaired or visually impaired. So what is assistive technology? Assistive technology is recommended to remove barriers for learning. All assistive technology devices or services for a child requires to be listed on the individual education plan or the 504 plan. So one of um, the items related to assistive technology is known as AIM or Accessible Educational Materials. With a documented print disability, the students must be provided with related core materials in a usable format. And that format can include large print, braille, digital, audio, and video. So let's talk a bit about the differences between assistive technology and instructional technology. So instructional technology is the same technology used by all students. A perfect example of this during um, COVID was remote learning devices. So another example that a lot of our schools used was programs like Raz Kids, Epic Books, Instructional technology is provided as part of the classroom learning environment. Instructional technology promotes universal design for learning, and it may support students who have a mild unidentified learning disability 
and the IT in place sometimes is enough. But when it's not enough and students aren't successful using instructional technology and those who need more support, then we go to assistive technology. And assistive technology is individualized and is specific for a student's individual needs. Students are already struggling with current methods to access. So for example, the paper and pencil and IT already is enough. And AT is provided only via an IEP mandated or 504 plan. Okay, let's go to the next slide. This is a wonderful, wonderful quote that we use. There is a misconception that providing assistive technology is giving a student an edge. Assistive technology does not give knowledge. It does not produce knowledge, but is simply a tool to allow true demonstration of an engagement with content. We're just gonna wait for the interpreters to get caught up. So we're gonna pause for a minute. And um, while we're, oh, I shouldn't talk while we're waiting. <laughs> I'll wait till they catch up. Okay, are we, we're good? I just wanted to say one thing is assistive technology is um, for students with disabilities and um, through an IEP, as Lindsay mentioned, or, or through a 504 plan. So, okay. Are we good to start? Yes, you're good to start. If you could just speak a little slower so our interpreters can keep a Absolutely. simultaneous pace. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about accommodations and modifications. So assistive technology is an accommodation, and we are changing how the student accesses their curriculum and expresses their knowledge. So accommodations do not change the curriculum. They only change how the student accesses and on a daily basis, modifications are changes to the curriculum, less or different content, and it customizes the curriculum and expectations of the student's knowledge of essential skills. So now Colleen is going to talk to you about literacy. Okay, so I'm gonna briefly just talk a little bit about literacy. And um, this is a slide that um, we, we attended uh, the assistive technology conference in February. And we got to meet with um, the speaker here who's listed uh, the credit for this is Kelly Suiting. And um, they were discussing literacy and the approach of assistive technology so to support literacy for students, uh, diverse learners. And uh, we mentioned, they mentioned that most and all the literacy programs that we, we know structured ones like Orton Gillingham, uh, Wilson Reading Program, they utilize a structured multi-sensory approach to teach literacy. The goal is for the student to decode independently. Now assistive technology plays a supporting role. Assistive tech does not replace the literacy programs which actually teach the coding skills, but AT, assistive technology can support a student to learn to decode while they're learning. And it also supports the student with their response interactions with the content. Hence this slide, decoding the content and interacting with or responding to the content are different skill sets. And I wanted to point that out that that's how AT plays a huge support in supporting students in learning literacy. The International Literacy Association says, quote, literacy is the ability to identify, understand, interpret, create, compute, and communicate using visual, audible, and digital materials across disciplines and in any content, unquote. And some things to consider that may impact the assistive technology or how your child is learning is what, what type of reading or learning style are, uh, do they use? Do they use, visual, are they a visual reader, a tactile reader, an auditory reader, or they may be a combination of all two or all three. 
And that's something that we consider when looking at assistive technology tools to support your child with uh, literacy. The next slide I wanted to talk about here is the relationship of writing and reading to support literacy. So when our team, um, our team assess students for assistive tech uh, for reading, we often find that there is some impact with writing. And this is not all the case, but we do notice that it's something we will look at and vice versa. If we get a referral for a student for just writing, we often see something going on with reading as well, maybe mild, but this is because reading and writing have a linear and reciprocal relationship. And according to researcher, Dr. Steve Graham, Dr. Graham is, um, the, is the Mary Emily Warner professor in um, Division of Leadership and Innovation at Arizona State University. And for more than 30 years, he studied how writing develops, how to teach it effectively, and how writing can be used to support both reading and learning. So when students write about material they are reading, they tend to understand the material better and retain it longer. And that statement goes back to the previous slide of how the, um, the way a, a student is interacting and responding to the content is really important. So it's not just the decoding piece, we need to have this interaction and response to the content, which plays into the writing piece. So just wanna state that here because the tools that we are going to show you are related to both reading and writing. Okay, so in this slide, just wanted to show you what our goals are. So we want, our goals are to empower the student to be able to achieve and succeed. We're trying to get the student who is discouraged to learn and complete schoolwork to actually be excited enthusiastic about their schoolwork. So that's the goal. So are you ready for the fun stuff? We're going to now dive in to the actual tools and solutions that are free and available for you. Okay. So the first thing to support our diverse learners, we want to remind our parents um, is your students have access to closed captioning when they are attending any uh, type of um, session. So Google Meet or Zoom or Microsoft Teams, um, even for students who are in a different um, school system, like a charter school, they may have a different platform. There is some form of closed caption. So I wanna remind you that this is really good and supportive as it provides the transcription and the student can follow along um, while they're listening. So remember, utilize and uh, closed captioning while they are attending any remote learning. Uh, the links here are active for you to click on to learn how to turn it on for Google Meet, for Zoom, or Microsoft Teams. The next slide that we're diving into is just a, also a reminder to always check your accessibility settings. So there are many built-in accessibility settings that are built into your devices um, already there. So um, in iOS, which reflects iPhones and iPads for your Mac, which is the Mac operating system, um, your Windows PC, um, these are all links that are active and work as well as Chromebook. And some of the, the um, accessibility settings include text to speech, speech to text and word prediction. Okay, so that's also something to start with that you have at, um, at your hand to, to start and take a look at to see what you can use. Now I'm going to reintroduce Lindsay back and she's going to share with you and talk about some free digital audio um, websites to access free digital audiobooks. Okay. Uh, Lindsay, you're on mute. Sorry. Universal design for learning applies to the idea of built in access and flexibility to the educational curriculum. So, here are a few examples of free audio and digital providers of audio and digital books that can be used for instructional technology, 
or IT to allow students the choice of how they would like to interact with the text. So again, all of these um, resources that we're sharing are hyperlinked on the PDF that you will receive when you go into your web browser and put in the bit.ly, which is on multiple slides. So a great, um, one of my favorites on this slide is Tar Heel Reader, and it's accessible books for on a wide range of topics, everything from Harry Potter to the American Revolution to Halloween. And it's for beginning readers. And it's an amazing, amazing resource for our children that have limited um, reading ability or our children that are on the autism spectrum disorder. And then here are some other ones like Story Share are more appropriate for teen and young adults. And Unite Link has picture books, which are important, as does Tar Heel Reader, and it's narrated in many languages. So that's what's good about Unite Link. And then ReadWorks Link is a database of nonfiction and literacy articles for kindergarten through 12th grade. So on the next slide, um, these are also more resources that foster student engagement based upon their learning preferences and can increase attention and focus to the task at hand by using digital and audio materials. One of the great things that we have in New York City is our New York Public Library, and there's a variety of um, digital and electronic books, and it's free. Get your library card. And other ones um, are Oxford Owl, and that's an ebook collection developed for elementary. There is Project Gutenberg, which is literature for upper levels with very few graphics. There is LibriVox, which is only audiobooks with chapters read by volunteers. So it's um, a live reader and not a computer voice. And then there is Storyline Online, which streams videos featuring actors, which can make literacy really fun, um, reading children books alongside the illustrations. And they're all free. One of the most amazing things that New York City has done is we partnerships with Bookshare. And Bookshare provides text in specialized formats to eligible students at no cost to the school and at no cost to the family and the student. And Bookshare sets up their materials in four ways by the New York City core curriculum, teachers college reading and writing project lists, Lexile reading levels, and Fontas and Pinnell. And another fabulous thing that Bookshare does is there is a summer in the city curriculum. So during our summer, our students can be engaged and get those summer reading lists accomplished. So if your student qualifies for a Bookshare account, the school can set up an organizational account to share digital con um, related texts such as workbooks and books and novels and textbooks. And then the student or and the family can set up their own individual account also for free to get books to read at their leisure. So the student has leisure books in a digital format. And as you can see, we're almost at a million titles. So the link is in our slide deck. Please take a look at it. And one of the ways that we can um, listen to Bookshare books is through Captive Voice. And it's a free app or Chrome extension. And it basically works on all platforms. So our students can listen to documents, books, and web articles. It is free, free, free. However, there is a freemium, and that's for just paying for better voices. But we always use the free voices because they're totally adequate and great. And it's an ebook reader that works with Bookshare as well as Project Gutenberg. Other free ebook readers that work with Bookshare are the Dolphin Easy Reader. So again, all these resources are available. The link to our deck is on this slide. So if you want to snap a picture or type that quickly into your web browser, you will get our entire slide deck and all of the um, wording on the slides that are blue are hyperlinked to the free resource. We'll open up to what we're talking about. 
So we're going to um, talk about apps and extensions, and I'm going to pass this on to Colleen. Okay. Hi. Thank you, Lindsay. So we're going to now dive a little bit deeper into some apps and extensions that we want to share with you that can help um, diverse learners. And wanted to just make a distinction uh, between the difference between apps and extensions. So um, it was something I actually uh, used to get very confused about, and I think that happens very often. So apps are known, um, applications are also known as apps, and they are most popular with iOS um, as well as Android stores. So what you get from the Apple store when you download, that's an app. There's apps for your shop, right? There's an app for a class dojo. Uh, there is an app for Google Drive. So those are all apps. And once you log in to your account, you can access them on different devices. Now, apps that are available on iOS are not always available on Android. Um, most of the assistive technology tools are available only on iOS. So now extensions. Extensions um, are added to your Chrome browser and they are linked to your Google account. So they work within your Chrome browser. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, I think you can see this, right? So these are extensions that are loaded here and this little puzzle piece actually shows the list of extensions that I have here. Okay, so I have open dyslexic font, I have a custom cursor and a confetti cannon. And uh, this is what my extension does. Um, I can press the confetti cannon and it shoots confetti. So what it does is it works uh, wherever you are working in your browser um, and it makes your experiences with school, work and home more efficient. And many of these extensions are great for us to support our students. OK, so we're going to go take a look at what we're going to talk about. So the first extension I wanted to um, share with you is called the Merc Mercury Reader. It is a free extension for Chrome. And what it does is it actually removes the advertisements and distractions, leaving only text and images. And what this does is it helps the student focus on the pertinent information on the website. Um, instead of focusing, as you know, many websites are loaded with advertisements that can be distracting and make it hard for some students to be able to process the information that's right there in front of them. So this is a Chrome extension that is free. Uh, if you click on this link, it will take you to the Chrome store and you can proceed to uh, add that extension, how like it will show up here um, to your Chrome browser. The next one is a favorite literacy support tool that we use. Uh, this is a very commonly recommended uh, extension we use with our students uh, because it does a lot. So it offers help with everyday tasks like reading uh, your text out loud, um, understanding unfamiliar words, researching assignments and proofing written work. It is such a wonderful tool for st staff and students. Uh, Read and Write does offer a 30 day free trial um, and it is actually free for teachers. So teachers can go in and sign on and they actually have access to this tool for free. Hang on one second. The next Chrome extension is something I just learned about this tool in February. Um, and um, it was through colleagues in the assistive technology world uh, in, on um, Twitter and um, ATIA and help, it's called Helperberg. So it is actually more than just an accessibility tool. It's a better way to be more productive and users um, are able to go in and um, it's, it makes the websites more accessible and more productive. Um, it lets, there's a lot of stuff built into this tool. So there is a free version. The basic version is free. The pro version costs uh, a little bit of money. It's not a lot, but the pro obviously lets you do a lot more. But I believe like immersive readers built into it. Um, 
uh, you can add post-it notes and it stays on your um, that website or that browser that you were in that you added a note to. And it's pretty cool. So I've used it. You can change the size of your words, the lettering, as well as make them bigger, smaller, spacing wise. Um, but it's it's great. It's a pretty cool free tool that you can check out. I recommend it. Mm. <laughs> okay, so the next one I wanted to show you is a great website tool for students reading literature, um, for reading like Old English and doing research. It's called Rewordify. So it uh, improves reading, learning, and teaching. And they basically, uh, you, you go to this website and you, you copy and paste, um, let's say a paragraph, right? It might be a paragraph from Shakespeare. Okay, maybe Romeo and Juliet or something and you can paste that in here. And what it does is it simplifies the um, English for the student to um, foster faster comprehension. So it's a pretty cool tool, it's free. It is just a website that you log into. And I mean, you, just, you don't log in, you just click on it and you can go to the website. Another great website is called Summary, S-U-M-M-R-Y. So summary, uh, what it does is it summarizes articles and text to provide an efficient manner for understanding the text. And it reduces the text to only the most important sentences. So it's pretty cool. It has like an algorithm uh, built in to this website. And it um, is like a little formula to figure out um, which words are the most important. So it, it kind of takes away an important word so the student can focus and have better understanding of the complex text that they may be uh, reading. So the next, um, uh, the next two tools I wanted to share with you are available on Microsoft Office 365. So the New York City Department of Education provides free Microsoft uh, software to students and families in the New York City Department of Ed public schools. Um, I also confirmed that students uh, and scholars who are charter school uh, students may access Office 365 that's provided by the New York City Department of Ed if they utilize their at nycstudents.net email. So, um, in addition, some charter schools may have their own Office 365 account for their scholars and students. So the software are education specific content that support our students academic improvement. In addition, uh, as students become familiar with these tools, it actually helps prepare them for post secondary school learning and work opportunities. One of my favorite tools, actually it's our whole team's favorite tools, is Immersive Reader. So Immersive Reader is built into Office 365. And I mentioned that it's also available. It's starting to become pulled into other extensions. That's how wonderful it actually is. So Immersive Reader supports users with varying disabilities, including um, dyslexia, ADHD, autism, and cerebral palsy as well as emerging readers and non-native speakers. So students that are English uh, ELL, English language learners. Immersive Reader is an amazing tool. And some of the key features and capabilities include a focus mode, immersive reading, reading aloud, changing the spacing of the font and the lines, short lines, so they have only like one or two lines showing, parts of speech support, um, syllabification, a picture dictionary. So if there's a word they don't understand, they click on it and it actually opens up a dictionary and also provides translation. So Immersive Reader is quite a package tool that is free on Office 365. Another one that I actually did not know about um, is Math Assistant. So math assistant is something that's built into OneNote. And what you do is you can, um, um, so AT for math, assistive technology for support for math is not 
very common. There's not as much. I know um, this is not reading and writing, but we wanted to share this one as this is a really good tool. So what the student can do is um, they can write or type any math problem in OneNote, which is built into Office 365. And what this tool does is is designed to help students reach a solution quickly, and it displays step-by-step -step instructions that help you learn how to reach the solution on your own. So this is a great support for um, for math problems for our students. Colleen, can I hop in for a second? Yes, absolutely. So. I know on here we say, you know, um, Office 365 tools for NYC DOE students, but my question is, is Math Assistant available to anyone who has OneNote? So like, let's say, you know, I'm a family who has a family computer with a Microsoft suite and we have OneNote. Can I find Math Assistant on my family? I think family you, account? you don't have to find it. You All you have to do can show you really quickly. That would is be great. Screen, is the screen still, um, show, is it moving to the website now or yes. is it showing the slides? Okay. So here, I'll just show you right here how it works. Um, oh, okay. So the student, they're showing someone just put this math equation in and you come to the right hand and say solve for X. And it actually starts to show you step by step, you see, how to solve the equation. It's within OneNote. It's, it's like built into OneNote. So it's not an extra thing. Uh, it is part of uh, the OneNote. It's a feature within OneNote to use the math assistant. So anyone that has uh, access to OneNote, you could be a personal copy um, or, you know, will be able to access this support. So then, so then anyone who has it can access it. But then if your child attends a DOE school, then you have access to it from the DOE services as well. Yes, correct. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, okay, so the next one I want to show you is another extension and we're leaning into, we finished the writing, I mean, the reading extensions and programs. We're gonna go into some of the writing supports. So one of the ones I use all the time is actually Grammarly. It's a Chrome extension and uh, it works seamlessly with Microsoft Word, with my Outlook, with my Google Docs as well. And what it does is it makes a grammatical um, suggestions. It catches and tells you um, when there's something grammatically wrong with your sentence. It also gives you words uh, to suggest a different way to write your sentence. So, and I, and it's really easy to use. It makes a suggestion, it's a pop-up box that comes up. And if you kind of agree with it, you like click and then it actually, it replaces uh, the words for you. Uh, it also helps you easily make the grammatical error changes as well. So free extension, Grammarly. Um, I've seen commercials on TV for this too. So um, it's pretty, it's pretty good, a, a good tool to use. I use it every single day. Yes, <laughs> and so do I. <laughs> and it's also a free app. So if any of you guys have iPhones, you can certainly download it and kind of get a taste for how it works. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, another one of my writing tools, this is my absolute favorite. I love Google Keep. So Google Keep is this amazing Google note-taking tool that you can use for so many things. You can color code it, you can add tags to it, you can share it with friends and family, you can do voice memos. So speak, you can record your voice to record a memo and it will actually transcribe it and add that as a line item on your note. So, and it actually saves a recording as well. You can delete the recording, it will keep the transcription on your note. You can take a picture and add it to your note. You can copy websites, put them in there. You can make checklists. I use it for shopping. I use it for to-do lists. I use it to save my recipes. I use it to share something with you know, my family members. Um, but it's a quick tool for you to take notes um, on the fly. I think that's great. And you can access it on all your devices that you are logged into your Google account. 
So my one Google Keep that I, let's say, put on my telephone will show up on my desktop computer as well as my iPad or my Mac when I log into my Google. So it's pretty, it's pretty cool. I love that it, it cross, you don't have to worry that your notes will get lost. It will not get lost, it saves it. Okay, um, so I'm going to now uh, turn over to let Lindsay take over to share uh, the last three apps and extension. And I think if we have some time, um, we definitely can share a show, do a little bit of a show, show and tell, I guess, in a way of some of the applications, maybe, you know, immersive reader or, or something. So, but Lindsay is going to talk a little bit about three uh, different apps and extensions. Okay, so we're going to talk about Kami. So Kami is also, there's a free basic version and it will annotate a PDF, convert to optical character recognition and so much more. So in other words, if you have, if your child has a worksheet, it will convert it where they will be able to type on the worksheet. So this acronym you just said, Lindsay, OCR, optical character recognition, what does that mean? It means that if it recognizes, if you take a picture of a worksheet, it will recognize the words on that worksheet. So program. like I can take my mouse and highlight the words. Yes, and it will read it. Got it, thank it, you. Yeah, it enables the screen reader to be able to read the text back to you. So all PDFs are not created equal. So a PDF alone is not accessible, right? So in order to make the PDF become accessible, it has to be turned into an OCR, which is the, what you just said. <laughs> um, and that way, recognition, optical right. character recognition, and that way a screen reader can read the text back out loud. Thank you for asking the question. So there is a paid version. Um, again, that's something that would be more of an assistive technology tool um, that would be evaluated maybe for, but it has text-to-speech, pictures, and PDF. But the free version, we use it almost all the time exclusively. And I know a lot of the schools have been using it during remote learning on the remote learning devices because the teachers would be able to present material, worksheets that they would normally do in school, and they were able to give it to the students through Google Drive, and then it was being able to be read because it was converted with optical, optical character recognition, and then students that needed to highlight to hear what was on the worksheet, they would be able to do that. In addition, they are able to write on it. So it's free. Um, another, the next one we're going to look at is called an iOS app. It is Snap Type Free. I love this app. A student um, can take a picture of their worksheet and import the worksheet from anywhere onto their device. And then they can use their iOS keyboard, which is a keyboard on the on screen keyboard, to add text to these documents. And you can print email and share the creations. It's a perfect solution for kids and even adults like myself that struggle with their handwriting. So it is free, free, free. Again, you can snap a picture and immediately type into. So if you had a physical worksheet and you took a picture, you would be able to type into it. This is my favorite, the next one, the iOS app notes. I exclusively use this as my go-to for everything. It's my digital paper and pencil. I use it to share notes with colleagues, to share notes with my family, with my husband. Um, you can draw on it with your finger or an Apple pencil. You can um, have a signature to it. You can jot down notes, save longer notes. You can fill it with checklists and images, web links scan documents, photographs, so many things you can do on note. Just think of it as a digital pad of paper, those old legal pads that we all use. This is what our kids now use. iOS app, the notes, and it's free. 
and it keeps everything in the cloud. And now we're just gonna talk about quickly these resources, they're all clickable. If you look at the bottom, this link, HTTP with the colon forward slash forward slash, if you type those, that link into your browser on your phone or your computer or your iPad, you will get a link to this slide deck and that's where you'll be able to see all these wonderful resources like the AT Family Site, AT Info Hub, Cat Team YouTube channel. This is a wonderful resource for families. If you do have a child who already has assistive technology, we have all these short little videos and snippets of telling you how to use the various tools. And here is the link also, which you can get in the slide deck if you have AT already for a help desk form or a training request form. I think now we're going to try to do some questions and answers. Well, we're actually going to include all of these links in the uh, follow-up email that you all get um, if, you're, if you're here with us live. And if you're watching the recording on YouTube, all okay. of those links are in the description below. So um, thank you, Lindsay and Colleen, for sharing so much information. You, sh Perfect. you shared a lot. And now I want to like kind of stump you a little bit with some questions that I think uh, are on families' minds, right? And I think there's, there's, you mentioned a lot of things, right? And some of these things are tools that we already have available to us. Like I'm thinking like the iOS Notes app, it's just on our phones and on our iPads, right? Like it's not something we have to download. We all have them, right? Correct. So I, I wonder if you right. could do, spend a little time um, talking about when we're talking about technology, there's really like three terms that are coming to mind for me. There's assistive technology, right? There's instructional technology. And then in our world of supporting students with disabilities, there's also this concept of uh, accessible education materials, right? Can you all talk about the mm -hmm. intersections of those a little bit? Because I think that a lot of what you've shared um, can be used as both assistive and instructional technology. Um, and, the, and so maybe that's something that we can talk about a little bit with families. Sure, okay, thanks Jose. So um, as we mentioned, um, instructional technology is basically any type of tool that it's sort of the context of how it's being used. I think that's the differentiation. So um, any instructional technology tool can become assistive technology uh, um, for a student. So for example, if a school decides to use, purchase, read and write for all their students, right? Their entire class. The read and write tool in that setting becomes the instructional technology tool to support all the learners in that classroom. They did not pick and choose five students to get read and write everyone has access to it. So read and write, which is a tool we use as assistive tech for specific students, right? Became instructional technology in that setting um, because the entire school chose to put it for all the students. So that's kind of a, a, a distinction. Now, accessible educational materials um, is basically uh, any, it could be braille, large print, uh, or digital uh, text and materials. Um, they are a form of assistive technology, right? Now, um, when a student is accessing Epic Books or RAS Kids, it's kind of a form of AIM because it's a digital version of a book. Uh, our students had to go on those platforms to access their some of their reading books, right? So that became AIM, but for most of the students, since the whole class was using it, it's considered instructional technology. But for the student who, who may need a little bit more, they may need that type of setting in the screen reader that actually may highlight the words or change, uh, like have that same book, but they might need a different type of support. The words have to be bigger. Um, the colors may be different. They might need like a blue background with black lettering. That becomes assistive technology and aim access to that same book, right? So the book may have been available in Epic Kids, but that's not enough support for this one student. 
So I hope that helps clarify that a little bit. Yeah, it really does. And I wanna bring Suzanne into the conversation. Suzanne, thank you for, I, throughout the presentation, uh, Suzanne's been answering folks' thank questions you. in the Q&A. Um, Suzanne, so assistive technology to us, right, means something very specific. And, and it's something that, a, a service that a child gets through their IEP, right? So in my mind, and I think a lot of parents might be thinking, what kind of questions or what should I, things should I be thinking about um, from uh, at my IEP meeting, right? To talk about assistive technology. Jose, that is such a, an important question, especially as Colleen and Lindsay share all this important information. What steps can a family take to support their child, right? So the first, the first point that I would recommend is suggest to families either prior to or during their child's IEP meeting is to think about and discuss with their child's IEP team, what does their child need to do, but is unable to because of the nature of their disability? And in thinking around that, they should consider five areas of function, physical, communication, cognitive, social, emotional, and academic. Assistive technology certainly is a support for academics, but we should remember is also a very valuable and powerful tool in helping children socialize and connect and communicate with others. So that's the first and I think most important thing for families to ask. And the other point to consider is what has already been tried by the school and sometimes including the family to support the student in it, those five areas and what has worked and what hasn't. And then to look at where can assistive technology or in some cases, instructional technology and AIM as Colleen mentioned, where can either of those three supports help the, the student access curriculum and be successful? And those I think are the most important parts uh, of consideration that a family can discuss with their child's IEP team. That's, thank you so much for that. I think it's one of those things that, I think a lot of times we, we like to think like, my child might benefit from these, these tools, right? Um, and, but then we get stuck on, sure, my child might benefit, um, but what, how is this affecting their disability and their ability to participate in school, right? And I like what you said, Suzanne, that it's not just the academics, it's, it's all of these different components um, uh, to it. So. Uh, it's a great thing. And I think maybe it's like something that, you know, we should always be thinking about and when we're preparing to meet with our IEP for like our annuals or for our triannuals, whatever it may be, or if it's the first time, right? Right. Um, I, I want to, we're, we're running close to time, but I want to ask a question uh, to Lindsay and Colleen. I think you, I mean, you all are always big champions about, you know, bringing technology uh, and, and, and learners together as much as possible. So, you know, in an, in an odd way, this pandemic has presented a unique opportunity, right? To bring yes. technology into our classrooms. Um, just some thoughts and, and anything you wanna say on like how this past year has um, really ushered technology into learning. Sure. Um, I, I was, um, I know in uh, the Department of Education really wanted to push a one-to-one -one device for students. And um, mm -hmm. that was something before COVID, it was a goal. That was actually a goal for the New York City Department of Ed to push one-to-one -one devices. COVID launched it forward really quickly. And that was one of the biggest goals to get uh, students access to devices. Because when you go to the suburbs and other um, states or whatnot, the districts have devices and they were already set up with some form of digital platform. And what was amazing was because of COVID, uh, we had to quickly, everyone had to quickly change their teaching methods to a digital platform. The teachers who already were doing that um, had a uh, sort of a um, advantage. They had a big advantage because their students were already familiar and they were already set up. And then for the learners and teachers that were didn't have that set up, it was a bit of a learning curve for everyone to get it set up. And for us in terms of assistive technology, um, it's been, 
it's been challenging at times because of the multiple different platforms as we encounter with different uh, teachers and different classrooms using it. Um, our assistive tech has to support the learner within their environment or whatever they're accessing. Um, so that has been good. But overall, I think um, what we have seen is our students that we're evaluating now for assistive technology have had a year of using some sort of digital technology to access their curriculum. And it gives us insight, uh, more insight into what can su better, better support them to access their curriculum. So I think that was a huge bonus for us that um, in the past, we've had students that have never used anything. They've never used a keyboard, they've never used an iPad. And now most, I would say most of the learners have had some interaction over the past year, so. I, that's, that's amazing. I think, I think one of the, like, if we look at silver linings, we see how um, the, the, we've really gone into a digital age yep. um, and bringing technology into learning. Colleen, Lindsay, Suzanne, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for sharing so much information. Thank you, uh, everyone. Thank I you. really appreciate it. Um, for those of you who are listening, uh, as always, tomorrow you're going to get an email from us, and that email is going to include three things. It's going to include the link to the recording to this presentation, um, uh, along with links, uh, the links that Colleen and, and Lindsay shared in their presentation. It's gonna uh, include the link to the survey for this session. And you'll also find that in the chat box of this session. So you'll feel free to click on that. Take a moment. It should only take you about a minute or two to fill out the survey. It really helps us plan for the future sessions uh, and, and really improve the series. And then the third thing is you're going to have the link to the, an upcoming our upcoming presentations. Um, so, Take that information, that link to the upcoming presentation and share it with a friend. Um, we really wanna make sure that we can continue to uh, provide this series. And the only way we do that is by making sure that we're reaching out to family. So take that link, share it with a few friends. Um, Colleen, Lindsay, if folks have questions about AT, who can they reach out to? Or how can they, is there an inbox? Um, yes, so they can yes. email us at cat team c a t t e a m at schools.nyc.gov all right thank you so much everyone thank you again to our at team and until next time stay safe and we'll talk soon have thank a good you. evening everyone have a good, have a good thank evening you, Jose. thank you